Post. Hey everybody, Dr. Sean is here from Project Forgive. I'm not on my usual Monday nights because I've been traveling and I'm assuming you can just hear me exquisitely and tonight is an exquisite topic, coping with criticism. And I'm about to do a little couple of commercials as we get going here and I'm going to focus on two things. I'm going to focus on the conversation of feeling criticized a lot. You know, like some of us, we just we feel criticized. No matter what people say to us, it feels very critical. And then those of us who are accused of being critical, so it's the flip side of both, those who feel criticized and those who are accused of being critical. So that's where I'm gonna to focus tonight. I see you guys are showing up. Not my usual night. I'm usually Monday nights at 6.30 p.m. Eastern and it is what it is and, re and we're redoing this lecture because I goofed up and I had my audio all messed up. So thank you for all your forgiving. Tara, thank you for the stars. And uh, just wanna say thank you for those stars because when you send us stars, it allows us to do things with our trainings to allow people to come for free. So that's a really good thing. Um, okay, sponsor tonight, Good Fat Life. Thank you, Sherry, at Good Fat Life. I'll make sure I put up their page. It's called Inspired Good Fat Life. And um, it's really about, key, there's a, a balance of keto and actually applying good fat into your life. I see you guys are showing up. <laughs> okay, Tara, I'm with you. Or Tara, um, I'm the critical one in my family. My husband's the one that always feels criticized. We had a huge breakthrough, so it's a good thing I'm doing this twice because I did it a couple of weeks ago and the audio was all messed up. And me and my husband had huge breakthroughs and I'm gonna share it with you as soon as I get through some of this content. And just, you know, for those just joining, whatever I mention or say, I put them in the notes. As soon as we're done, it all goes in the comments. You can read it, the examples that I give, the, the examples that I tell you to try in communication. My expertise actually is communication. And they work. They feel awkward at first, the things I'm gonna teach you, it feels awkward at first, and then you start getting used to it and you start getting softer and more pliable and more intimate in the relationships that matter to you. Excuse me, I need to hit my nose, sorry about that. Okay, so, thank you, Good Fat Life. Um, we always give out prizes. At the end of this one, I'm giving out some prizes. There's gonna be one winner in the US only, that's where we focus is on the US mostly because it's cost prohibitive for us to send it out of the country. Sometimes it can be 40, 50, 60 bucks to ship. And when it's less than that here in the US, it makes it doable for us to give prizes. So tonight's prizes, I've got one, two, three, four of them. It's for one person. One person gets all four. I got this first, Stop Pain Clinical. This one is a spray for immediate penetrating relief from arthritis, muscle aches, joint, and back pain. This stuff is really, really good. I see you guys. Hey, Lynn, it's nice to see you. Then we've got, of course, our masks in our store. This one's Kindness is Contagious. Someone's gonna get that with this package. I'm throwing in something from Merck, who's a corporation we've been pursuing. And uh, it's am Animal Health. It's a little package that has scissors and, um, here. I don't remember everything that's in it. I haven't looked inside in a while. It's just a nice little pack for your pet to help take care of your pet's health. And then one of our newest products, um, it's brand spanking new, it is our Forgiveness Essential Oil. And we don't have our labels yet. I think we're going to get them on Friday. That's what Hailey emailed me today. Hailey is the gal who runs our office. She's like the most <laughs> organized person I've ever met. So we're waiting on the labels. But I'm just like, heck, I'm going to go ahead and send this. Um, for the person who wins tonight, okay? And the only caveat is that we wanna make sure it's not leaking. We got really good bottles. We had our own blend made up, 100% um, organic, pure essential oil. And um, we're big fans of essential oil, so we decided to create our own blend. So I'm really excited about this. So you get it with no label and you just have to tell us how it shipped to you and if you like it, okay? That would be the one request I would have. All right, so those are the prizes that go out tonight. I'll do it at the end. I'm probably going to last 15, 20 minutes. That's how long our lectures usually last. A um, couple of other things. If you're new, tell us because we love to welcome new people. Our community is so exquisite. We also have emails. If you're inspired by our emails, I'll put up a link if you're inspired to sign up and get joy because joy is our focus. No matter what crap is going on in your life, I don't care how horrible it is. <laughs> creating and sustaining the habit of finding joy in little things, even if it's for 10 seconds, will actually help your mental health. 
and so we love the conversation of joy. We also have a Joy is a Habit Facebook group. I'll put that up and we post exquisite, joyful stuff. Just make you laugh, make you smile, make you feel good. Also, if you're part of a progressive company that brings in exquisite live or virtual presenters like myself, we would love to have the opportunity to do it. We're very progressive. We play in that realm of high pressure communication, forgiveness in the workplace. I know corporations like General Motors and Corteva AgriScience love the work that we're doing. And um, it's non-religious, non-partisan. It's really about bringing people closer together. And forgiveness of a colleague is very different for, of, than forgiveness of a partner or a spouse. So there's different layers and leveling, and we're really good at it in the workplace, too. Um, we'll put up a link for that if you want to send it to your HR or your marketing people or whomever brings in speakers to exquisitely train those your colleagues. Okay, let's see if anybody's, let me see if there's something I need to say. Hey, Liz, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. I see you guys are here. Renee, Renee. Hi, Patty. I see you guys. Yep, I'm with you, Bethany. I get it. <laughs> I get it, girl. I still get, hey, Ruth's in the house. My surrogate mama. Hi, Maria. It's nice to see you. Yep, Renee, I am so with you. Yep. I got it. I love the get it girl. Oh, thank you so much, Claudine. I just put on lipstick. I appreciate you saying that. It's the first time I put on makeup in like three days, right? <laughs> okay. Tonight's focus is criticism. We're going to look at two parts. Feeling criticized, if you're the person who feels criticized, and then on the opposite end, when you're accused of being overly critical. I fall in the overly critical realm. I'm accused of being overly critical. And this has been a journey I've been struggling with for a long time, and I'm starting to have some headway, okay? All right, so whatever side of the fence you're on with criticism, both of them are like being in a pinball machine. Somebody says something and boom, you're off. You feel criticized. You can even feel your body crumple in and it just feels like crap. Same thing if you're accused of being criticized, your husband or partner says, oh, there you go again. And you go like, oh man, can't I just say what my needs are? Why do you have to take this so personal? And then the person on the other side is like, you are so personally attacking me, right? Two, two, same, two flip sides of the same coin. And regardless if it's you're feeling criticized or you're accused of being overly critical, they both have you feel like you're walking on eggshells. They do, because it's like, oh, should I say this? What's the right way to say this? Reminds me of being a kid, like saying something a certain way. I come from an alcoholic family. I could say something one day to my mom and it's fine. And the next day I could say the exact same thing and she'd haul off and hit me, okay? So it was so inconsistent. And that's what's the hard part about this. It's so inconsistent, especially if you're hitting old wounds. And when it comes to criticism, I really believe if you have a high charge or a repetitive reaction that it has a lot to do with old wounds. And so researchers show that and it's all that, also that feeling of one wrong move syndrome, like one wrong move, boom, you, the floor is pulled out from under you, okay? And this high sensitivity to criticism can be caused by cognitive biases, you know, I'm using the, the research words, the PhD words, toward interpreting ambiguous information neg negatively. So it could be this or that, and you tend to take it on negatively. It also could be that you sometimes we're sensitive to criticism because we come from abusive backgrounds. And some of us are just sensitive to it, period. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to have come, have come from trauma or abuse. Okay, I'll come in and look and see what you guys are saying here in just a second. New, I saw oh, new people. Yay, Valerie, so glad you're here. Okay, yep, I'm with you. Yep, I'm with you, Kit, Liz, on the, the alcoholism. Okay, so here, let's start with feeling criticized. I found this list, like how to handle criticism. It's like your typical six things that you'll see in an article on Google or whatever. And I thought, well, this is, this will, this is a good place to bounce off of. All right, so I'm gonna list you the six. Remember, whatever I say, I'll put in the notes as soon as this live is over, okay? Um, so how to handle criticism. Listen honestly for a critic's intention. And, you know, do you give your partner the benefit of the doubt? Do you give your colleague the benefit of the doubt? Or are they always critical? Those are things to consider. Is it, what is the critic's intention? This, this is a biggie. Decide if the feedback is constructive or destructive. The destructive kind, dang, that's the toughie. And I'm going to dive into that in just a second. 
Sometimes it even helps. You fake it till you make it, man. Thank those who offer constructive criticism. Michelle, thank you for providing that feedback. I don't particularly like it, and I will mull over what you said, okay? Because obviously it's important to you, and I really want to consider the things you said to me, so I appreciate it. Things you want to do is avoid exploding in the face of constructive criticism. <laughs> I can do that myself, so I'm practicing that. Um, another biggie, minimize encounters with harmful people. That's back to that destructive criticism and then also make plans to act on constructive criticism like going back to Michelle she said I the way that I did the Google Doc didn't quite resonate for the entire team I didn't like it I put a bunch of time into it so I've had time to look at it and like oh she has a point there okay um, I can even let her know hey I really appreciate you said that to me initially I didn't care for it too much quite honestly but you know what what you said about how to divide it on the Google Doc, that actually made sense to me. And I can see that the team is deeply engaging. So thank you for that feedback. I appreciate you doing that. Okay? All right. Constructive or destructive? I'm going to give you some options. The destructive criticism, you are so fat. Are you going to eat that? You're so fat. Why do you keep shoveling peanut butter in your mouth? Oh my God. Oh, I, I'll show you an example. Right now my office is a hot mess. I'm just redecorating. Right, okay, look. Redecorating, look at it's a hot mess. Everything's everywhere. And I just moved those over there. Okay, <laughs> I said to my husband, I said, you know, what do you think? Uh, uh. And I could tell he's in, not in a happy space, <laughs> especially with me today. You know, doing some bouncing around with stuff today, pinballing today as I call it. And I was like, oh, man, he could not meet that need. And so I called my daughter, and I said, hey, Rachel, what do you think? She's like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Okay? So it's okay to go to other people, especially if people in your life are in a, I don't want to say bad spot, but you know you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because sometimes people can, those partners can't meet those needs for whatever reason, right? So here you are with criticism. You're receiving criticism. And here's a very vulnerable and open-hearted way to talk about it. I'll get back to you, Sandra. You're saying some good stuff. So this would have been great for me to say today. I didn't have it to do it with my husband when he said, uh, you know, I don't know. It just feels crowded. Here's one of the phrases. Honey, can you say that another way? I'm feeling really defensive. That's pretty open-hearted. Now, this is stuff you want to do with people that you want to be close to, not those that harm you all the time. That's not the realm you want to do it. And, Sandra, you mentioned, you said, um, why, why do I tend to go straight to destructive prism, not mean, but destructive? Sandra, that's, for me, because I can do that too, a lot of times that has to do with stuff that's incomplete for myself, and I'm taking it really, really personally. So sometimes when I think of something and I want to come out of my mouth, I'll say, wait a second, let's sit with that a little bit. You don't have to just blurt it out right now because sometimes we just like to blurt things out. Sometimes we like to wait a while to process. And when I take a minute and give myself a breath, I can actually ask myself, is this going to contribute to the conversation or is this going to push us away? Was it going to bring us together or push us apart? And the truth is I really want to bring us together. Um, and that's even something else you can say, well, I'm noticing my immediate reaction, honey, is to be critical back because I didn't like that. But the truth is I'd rather not push you away. I'd rather step into what you're saying because I really care about what you have to say. That's another way to say it. Here's another way to say it. You know what? I'm going to give you the benefit of, benefit of the doubt that you didn't mean to sound so critical. What exactly are you trying to say? Now, if I would have said that to my husband today when I showed him the office, say, you know, if I said, you know, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you didn't mean to sound so critical, what, what exactly are you trying to say? He would, I know this is what he'd say. He'd say, oh, oh, no, I don't, I'm just, you know, lost in thought. I'm in my own day. I'm doing my own thing. And you asked me immediately, and I gave you my immediate gut reaction. I did not mean to be critical at all. That's cool. I can be with that. Because um, the more, the, 
When you create vulnerable conversations with people capable of being vulnerable with you, they will respond appropriately. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time because we've trained them for us to have communication in the past that doesn't always necessarily work really well. If you stick to it, I promise it's gonna work. A, it's gonna work. B, you're gonna decide that no matter what you do and who you're being in this particular relationship, that it's not gonna work and you do not wanna take those risks anymore. You'll make those decisions. And um, you'll, or you'll create boundaries. Because when we get upset, when we get upset, it's a, our body is alerting us that boundaries need to be put in place. Okay? When we get upset, our body is telling us, our soul is telling us that we need to set boundaries. And so many times, and this is going to be a talk another day, not next week, maybe the week after that, boundaries are not meant to be a club, to beat people into submission. Boundary, the goal of boundaries is to bring us together so I can show, share vulnerably what's going on for me to bring us closer together, not to beat with a club. Make sense? And my husband, whenever he hears the word boundary, rolls his eyes like, oh gosh, another boundary. You know, then I know I'm not expressing the boundaries in a way that he can hear. So I'll explain. I'll say, you know what? I really want to share this boundary, which I'm going to share the breakthrough here very soon, because I want us to be closer together, not further apart. I love and care about how you feel. Okay? All right. Now, let's go to this. Let's go to this one. My mom, my mother. How you get, how, yeah, I see you guys are showing up. Wonderful. Yep. And sometimes families just don't care. They just don't have the skills to. Hi, Janine from Canada. I see you guys. And um, sometimes they just don't have the skills. And the interesting part or the interesting piece is to keep looking, where do you go to the hardware store to get milk? Because sometimes our families can't meet the needs that we want and we keep trying to get milk, damn it. And they're a hardware store. They do not have the milk. Mom might be a great babysitter when you need help, especially on the fly, right? Especially on the fly. Okay. So my mother, deeply critical. Anybody else had a deeply critical parent, right? Just, I want you to notice there's spammers and scammers in the feed. Do not reply to them. As soon as people are saying, how are you doing today, dear? Those are scammers and spammers. Do not reply to them. I used to get so mad at them. Now I just understand that that's the, that's the way they're making a buck and let it go. Just, just ignore them, okay? All right, so my mom, deeply critical. No matter what I did, she'd still, you know, Emmy Awards. I show her an Emmy-winning video for Cancer Society, for goodness sake, and she'd find something bad that she didn't like, like, ah, and it won a freaking Emmy, okay? I could have many stories like that. Can anybody relate? Okay, deeply critical mother, I'm with you. Yep, I'm with you, Michelle. So what I started to do, I says, okay, that didn't work. I'm gonna try some new ways of sharing the impact of this because I don't wanna shut my mouth down and I do, do not wanna shut my emotions down. I don't wanna have to be small around my mother. This is when my mother was dying. She passed a year ago, January. So it was just me and her that last year of her life. And uh, it was tough. And so I would try different things because I was with her freaking every day, okay? <laughs> Which was a journey all on its own. And so I started to play with it. Like she'd say something critical and I would say, boy, and I'd laugh. I'd say, I should hang out with you more often. I feel so good after your criticism. I never have to worry about getting a big head. And every single time when I do something to that effect, she would laugh out loud and she'd say, oh, sorry. Okay, oh, sorry about that, okay? Denise, I'm coming to you very soon, okay? <laughs> Those that accuse you of being critical, okay? All right, what's crucial when you're with somebody that you care about, like a mother, right, like a mother, just, just a reminder, Samson, do ignore Samson. Actually, Samson, we'd prefer you to go away because what you're doing does not feel good. We will ban you from the page. Please don't do that. It doesn't feel good. Okay, now, when my mother would say stuff to me that made no sense, I would go in my mind's eye, in my body, and talk to myself and I'd say things okay Sean she's just saying you've got brown eyes and your eyes are blue 
It is not personal. This is just how she attempts to connect, no matter if she sabotages, no matter what she does. I am not going to dance in that habit of connecting in a painful way. Because that really, when somebody's really, really critical to you, it's their attempts at connecting in a negative way. You ever seen kids do it? Kids do it all the time. They learn it when they're kids. They react with negative feedback because at least they're getting some attention, okay? So let's say it's you. You're the one <laughs> who's accused of being overly critical, right? I'm with you, Surly. I so get it. You're the one who's being critical. They're accused of being critical. Here's the questions to ask yourself, and I will put them in the notes. Are your needs getting met? And I have the tendency to be on that flip side of being overly critical, that people would experience that. When my needs are not getting met, I can have an edge or a charge to my voice, okay? Like if the garage has been a mess for two months, after a month it's hard, two months, and, it, and I, though I might say it really sweet, oh, are you gonna do the garage today? And he just turns and looks at me and gives me the evil eye, okay? Because it lands as criticism, because of course he's never doing enough, the, the garage isn't done. So the, a key question for you is, are your needs getting met? And because here's the thing, when your anger builds up, it builds up with unresolved stuff. That's when the words out of your mouth come out harsh and you actually are leaking your anger with unresolved feelings. That's something to consider. Are you leaking unresolved stuff that you're not talking about? Okay. Is this a trigger that when it's poked, you shift in protecting parts of you and you become really defensive and you have that harshness to your, bo your, brain, your, your voice. And this is about your amygdala brain, that, that, the amygdala brain, that part of your brain that's in fight or flight. Um, perfect example for me, being an incest survivor, which I talk about very openly and honestly. One of my triggers is pen clicking or gum popping. Some days are better than others. In my 20s, it was like death. Now in my 50s, I have more facility to manage the gum popping and the, the pen clicking. But some days when I'm super duper tired and someone starts clicking their pen, I just want to pull off and whack them, okay? <laughs> I know you guys can relate. This is about being human, okay? So the game is to dump the feeling of walking on eggshells and start noticing these triggers, noticing these, this anger, noticing if your needs are getting met. This is for the person who's accused of being critical. Okay, now, in the midst of the accusation, when someone says, you are so critical, I can't believe how hurtful you are, you meanie, okay. or a version of that. It's gonna be the hardest thing to do because your amygdala brain, that survival part of you is gonna to wanna to scream back, hey, you mother, could you, you talk to me like that, blah, 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 blah. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> the hardest thing to say in the midst of this is, Tell me more. And the game here is to fake it till you make it. Because the last thing, when my husband just said I am overly critical, the last thing I want to say is, oh, tell me more. And whenever I have to say, tell me more, that's my internal clue that there's, there's gold here for me. There's a miracle here. There's pieces of my unconscious that I want to make conscious. And the bottom line of Project Forgive is about making the unconscious conscious and growing ourselves and developing ourselves. What is unconscious about me that I can't say, tell me more, okay? So it, I've been able to do it a few times, not all of the time, but probably 50% of the time I can, I'm starting to play with it pretty well. Now, after work, when everyone is calm and you're not in that bash in each other place or two pieces of really awful sandpaper, okay, <laughs> they're trying to rubbing against each other and it's really harsh, you can say something like, hey, can we talk about what happened today when blah, blah, blah happened and you felt criticized? I would like to uncover or look at what happened because the truth is I care about how you feel. And I also want to talk to each other with care and concern and dignity and respect. And this pinball thing that we just bounce off each other, it's like walking through the life unconscious, okay? That always works. So here's my exquisite example, okay, as I close out. Oh, <laughs> Lynn, that's awesome. Let me see if you guys are saying anything that I need to see before I go into this last one. 
Oh, Caroline, I'm with you. I'm so with you about that. Yeah, because it's easy to hide, right? Perfect. Let me see if there's anything I need to say. You guys are listening great. Okay, perfect. So here's what happened. I, so I did this criticism lecture two weeks ago, and it, the sound was all messed up. And uh, sure enough, I get off the, the, get off the live, and um, I've been talking about laundry in my house. Laundry, toothpaste, those are all things we can relate to, right? I, one of the things I've done in the last three months of my life that's brand new for me is I stopped doing everybody's laundry. I don't do my husband's laundry anymore. When I go to Florida and visit kids, I don't clean their house anymore and do all their laundry. I just don't do it, okay? And, uh, and one of my things with my husband <laughs> is once in a while he'll do the laundry, but he doesn't complete it. He'll leave it in the dryer or he'll throw it on the bed. I don't know it's there. I go to bed at 10 o'clock and my bed is covered in laundry. I'm just like, <sighs> I just don't like that. So I really don't even want him doing my laundry. Okay, you do yours, wonderful. I'm gonna do mine, perfect. We can do it however we need to. So after this criticism lecture, my husband did my laundry, okay? <laughs> It's laid out on the bed. I'm getting ready to go to bed. And I was like, oh. And I saw, and, the, and one of the triggers for me is when I feel like I need to get it done right now off my to-do list, that's usually not a good time to do it, okay? Because I can have an edge to my voice, right? So I said to my husband, I says, hey, honey, kind, hey, do me, you know, do me a favor. I don't even want you to do my laundry. He was so upset. He gave me permission to talk about this. He would reacted back, I can't believe it, I can't please you, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the freak just happened? I just set a boundary, please don't do my laundry. I actually thought you would be happy about that. You know, blah, blah. So we're like banging heads, kind of going in separate rooms because what we do when we fight is we separate. We usually come back together. Sometimes it's harder than other times, right? Then something happened that I've never seen happen with my husband before. My husband is very quiet, introverted kind of guy. And he says, you know, Sean, I want to tell you something. What happened? For, and, oh, what he accused me of, because I hurt his feelings or whatever I did, that I'm not present. You are not present. If you were present, you would never say that to me about your laundry. And I'm like, I'm like, in, oh my gosh, where did that come from? Okay. What I wasn't present to was how he was feeling. And this is what he shared with me. He said, Sean, actually, I was gifting you a present. I did the laundry because you did blah, blah, blah that day. And I just wanted to reciprocate and show you that I loved you. And when you were critical of it or when you didn't like it, it hurt my feelings. Oh, dear. Oh, honey bunny. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for telling me what was really going on. Because usually under all that criticism game playing is the real truth. And it's usually about feeling hurt. It can be, right? So I was so touched by that. And I love that he shared that with me. And in his world, I wasn't present to the gift. Okay? Well, I'm hardwired different than my husband. So I wasn't present to that as a gift. Not even close. Because that was not a gift in my world. <laughs> okay? You follow my line of logic. You following what I'm saying. Very cool things can start happening when you start opening your mouth and start talking about the criticism, not in the heat of the moment, later when you're both nice and calm, okay? I'll say that phrase again. I'm looking for it. Hey, can we talk about what happened today when I mentioned about the laundry? I would like to uncover what happened between us because the truth is I really want us to be close. I want us to treat each other with dignity and respect. And let's give each other the benefit of the doubt. We've been together 25 years. Okay. Hi, Penny. I see you. Excellent. Okay. Anything else burning that anybody's got to say? Let's see. Perfect. Just seeing what you guys are saying. Okay. I'm about to give away a prize. Before I do that, a couple of things. Next week, uh, the topic is going to be when everything feels like a struggle. I'll be back in on Monday, Monday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, when everything feels like a struggle. Like what are some tips, tricks, 
it's not even that. What are some things you can do for self-care when everything feels like a struggle? And I'm not going to tell you to go take a freaking bath, okay? That's what everybody says. Go take a bath. Light a candle. Uh, yeah, in theory, yes, I guess. And it does work when you actually take the time to do it. But that's not the kind of stuff we're going to talk about. Like when things feel like a struggle, what are you doing, right? I'm with you, Nunez. Prize winner. So here's the prizes tonight. We've got Kindness's Contagious Mask. We've got Stop Pain Clinical. This is for back pain arthritis. It's actually pretty darn good. Um, it's penetrating relief. It's really good stuff. Going to get the Merck Animal Health Pack for your pets. And then, of course, our newest launch that we haven't launched yet is our Forgiveness Essential Oils. 100% organic. It's just delicious. And uh, we don't have the labels yet because they haven't arrived. So you're just going to get that too. So the person that wins is going to be in the U.S. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. Be in the U.S. And there, it is not fair. Life is not fair. <laughs> it never is. I'm going to give you a phrase to say, to put it in the feed. And the first person that shows up in my feed with the words that I say is going to win this prize caveat is you've got to be in the U.S. and be the first one in my feed, okay? If you've won a billion times, I have a couple of people that have won like 10, 20 times even in the last year. I don't care. You can win as much as you want. I think it's cool when you win a bunch of things. And also, if you find this broadcast helpful, please share. Please share our posters. Please share our articles. The more you share, the more excited corporations like General Motors, Corteva, even Stellantis, T-Mobile, that's the next one on our list, they get inspired by these authentic conversations and actually bring them into the workplace, which is really, really cool. So if you're inspired to share, please do so. You make a difference for us, okay? All right, so someone's going to win. Let's, let's see. <laughs> Here's the word, okay? I'm going to have you type in one word. It can be spelled wrong. You are allowed to spell it wrong. The word is laundry. <laughs> I personally think that's funny. So put in, first person to put in the word laundry in my feed is going to win. It, you have to be in the U.S. People are starting to look. Let me see if people are sharing yet the word laundry. That's all I want to see is the word laundry. Cat Moore, it's you, baby. All you got to do is email, message me here on Facebook, not Instagram on facebook i need your address and i also need your email the email is for tracking for shipping it'll go out tomorrow and then this way we can keep track of it where it's going and all that good stuff i see you guys are playing i love that you guys are playing um so it's you cat so make sure you get it to me in messenger if you can do that right away that would be fantastic uh thank you all for playing somebody eventually you're gonna win is just the way it works and um next week when everything feels like a struggle. Like how can you release that load emotionally, physically, spiritually? How can you do that? Okay? All right. What a joy to be with you tonight. I will see you next time. I'll, as soon as I hang up, I'm going to be putting up the notes and, uh, and I'll pin it to the top for you. Okay? Okay. Big love, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing Project Forgive. And thanks for making the conversation of forgiveness important in your life and for being on the journey of making the unconscious conscious. That to me is the highest level, emotionally, spiritually, personal intelligence, personal in de development, is to really work on our forgiveness and also work on making things conscious so we can be more conscious, loving humans, not only to each other, but also to those we work with and the planet, right? Big love. I'll talk to you guys soon.